I'm super excited to share uh, my new friend, Nikki Klein, with you guys. So Nikki, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for How having are me. You? Oh, let's see. Let me see if I can turn you up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. Uh, how are you? Everything good? Everything's awesome. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. So I have been, um, I think I've pretty much said your name on like every live stream and every, yes. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, basically I'm copying everything that she is doing right now with her Facebook groups. Yes. Um, and you just had your social distancing group hit like what, 6,000? We're just over, we started it last week and we're at 6,300 people, over 6,300 people. Okay, so this is awesome. So we're gonna probably not uh, not talk about as much stuff out of this book on this one because I really, really want her to share because I guys feel like this is um, the market of the moment right now, right? We are in we are in a social distancing market. So um, so this is just gonna be really great value for you. So before we get started, Nikki, tell them a little bit about you um, and your background in real estate. Yeah, sure. So I am in Boca Raton, Florida. I have a little team, the brilliant team in Boca Raton, Florida. We, um, I got my license about six years ago. I started Facebook groups was my one thing. And um, through my Facebook groups, I've sold probably close to 30 million um, in volume, uh, exclusively from that. Um, and then, um, yeah, I just, it's, it's what I love. It's my my pride and joy. I love bringing people together and connecting them. So love talking about it. Happy yeah. to answer any questions. Well, and now more than ever people, well, and I want you to kind of talk about this. I'm not going to talk yeah. about it. People are, are craving uh, connection and community. So maybe start if you don't care about kind of talking a little bit about that. Yeah. So I actually, um, I made, I made some notes so that I could yeah. Everything. So I, I wanted to talk about the reasons to start a Facebook group, right? So first of all, you want to, you're going to be able to create a community of like-minded people. So if you're going to start a Facebook group, do something that you're uber passionate about, that you can talk about, that you want to connect with other people about. Um, you get to have exposure to a captive audience, which is amazing. We're all stuck at home for the next who knows how long. So when you create a group, people are on Facebook all the time. You have this captive audience in front of you. Uh, you can nurture relationships through your Facebook groups. People get to know you as a person. Uh, there are 400 new Facebook users every minute. Which wow. Is probably more with everything that's going on with the quarantine. So, um, and then you also get to have a leadership role, which is amazing. You get to, you get to be in control of the group and make sure that it's flowing the right way, that, that you can build this culture around you. And my favorite reason is that it's free. You don't have to pay anything. You get to build this massive audience. I have my, my um, community group is almost 14,000 people that I have in a basically a private database and I don't pay for it. So it's, it's so, pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, I was gonna say that's super um, impressive. So. Well, where do you want to start? Do you want to start talking about your group or what, what would be easier for you? Well, what I want to start talking about, I know that so many people are really um, hungry to start a Facebook group. So I just want to really clarify the difference between what a Facebook group is and what a Facebook page is. I think that a lot of people don't know what the difference is. So you, you, could, you have the capability of building one, um, or you could build either or but I just want to differentiate what they are so that you have a better understanding. So a page is um, a place where you can build your business and a group is where you create a tribe, you create a culture. A page is going to be more informative. You're going to be sharing information about the area um, and a group is going to be more interactive. You're going to get engagement from people who are in the group. Um, a page is going to be more professional and a group is going to be personal. Page is more about the quantity of like how many posts you're going to put in and a group is going to be about the quality of the posts that you're creating because again, you want to create that engagement. You want to add value to people. And then a page is again about the consumer, whereas the group is going to create brand evangelists for you. So that those are really the, the major points that differentiate creating a page in a group. I personally prefer a group because I want people to get to know me on a personal level because I'm all about, I'm a relational agent, not a transactional agent. So I want people to get to know me as a person and not for each transaction that happens. 
Yep. Okay. I think that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that because there is a lot of confusion between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell them a little bit about your group first, just to kind of get started. So my, um, my community group. Yes. Yes. So I started that, uh, probably about four or five years ago. And the reason I started is I moved to a new area and I didn't know anybody. And so I really like to connect with people. I selfishly wanted to know like what the best restaurants were and what the best, you know, stores were to go to. So I started a Facebook group. I invited people are probably going to be asking like, how did you start and how did you grow to this massive group? So what I really want to make clear is that I started small and you have to be really patient and consistent. Don't throw everybody into the group, really look for key players who are going to be able to contribute to the group and add value. Um, I feel like um, I invited a lot of influencers. I would look at my friends, I would message them directly and say, hey, I'm thinking of starting this Facebook group. I think it'd be really awesome if you came and brought your friends, we could really add value to the community. Um, I, I think it's really important to allow the members within your group to create connections. I never have a post that has not been answered because when people ask questions, they want to feel validated. And if you don't validate them with a response, they won't ask a question again. So it's really important that you kind of hug on everyone that's in yeah. the group. Um, and, and also answer, you know, I always, I, I give this analogy. It's like, you wouldn't go to a bar and say, you know, somebody would come up to you and be like, Hey, how are you? You wouldn't respond with like, a thumbs up or a, or a heart, right? You would actually speak to them. So instead of just liking and doing hearts and smiley faces, engage in conversation, get conversation going. And that's also gonna increase Facebook's algorithm outside of the group so that you get more people that see, oh, this is a group that's recommended because they're, they're gonna see the activity that's going on. Um, I also would encourage you to email your database and tell them, we just started this group, would love to help the community connect, come join us. And then um, again, just listen to the people who are in the group and engage second. Put, make sure you have rules and structure. Don't be afraid to say no to people. It's just, um, you know, making sure that you're building the community and creating a culture that people can relate to. So I started this, um, social distancing together group last week and it became this like meme fest the first day was insane it was just people were posting memes and memes and memes and so what i had to do is really be very careful about telling the moderators so i picked some moderators who were influencers and i asked them to invite all of their friends and what we do is we time block for when we're going to allow memes to come in and then we as moderators ask questions that are serious so that we set the tone for the group and other people feel that they can ask serious questions as well. So it becomes uh, really a tribe as opposed to just a place where people are throwing memes away. So um, yeah, just, it's up to you as the administrator to set the tone and to be the leader and to help people understand what the culture of the group is going to be. And I also would encourage you to make the group private and not public. That's another question that I always get. You can control it if it's private, if it's a private closed group, as opposed to being public. And then it goes into everyone's news, feed, news feeds and they just get irritated. Um, so those are some things I would recommend. Yeah, I think those are all really great tips. Um, so, okay, tell us a little bit about uh, the success that you've had from your group and just how, like, how has that progressed over time? Cause I know you said in the beginning, like start small and for yeah. a lot of, a lot of agents, like they feel like if they don't have 500 people in their group on day one, they feel like it's a, it's not it's a success. Failure. Right. No, it's stone, slow and steady. I mean, you have to build a reputation because once you, so the way that I really started um, getting traction was I was always adding items of value. So obviously we weren't in the quarantine three or four years ago. So I would post events that were happening I would post local important news that was happening. If they were opening a Whole Foods or a Walmart, I would post that information first. So I would become the go-to page for anything that was happening. I would just, you know, I spent a lot of the time when I got into the business, um, I, I started looking at 
my peers and seeing what they were posting. And the minute I would see, you know, something of value, I would quickly post it in my group so that it would become, you know, one of the first things that people see. And that, that over time, I would get my friends saying, oh, I told my friend to join your group because you have all the breaking news information. So it's really trying to find that breaking news information. When I first started, what I was going to say is that I would, I would really like look at news articles the minute they came out and I would post anything relevant into my group. So spread it out. Don't put too many posts too much. Otherwise people are going to get sick of it because as the admin of the group, you're going to come up in everybody's news feeds. So it's important to not overdo it with your posts. And the beauty is you can also schedule your posts. So if I had like three things, I'm like, I want everyone to see all of these. I would schedule them two hours apart so I could set and forget, right? Like you just, you plug it in, you schedule it, move on to the next thing and you know it's gonna, and then I would get comments. I'd be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot that I posted that. So that's, that's kind of how I started the growth of the group. Yep, okay. So um, we just got a question for you. Uh, on your social distancing group, back to that really quick, what sort of, because someone could do that on a local level. I mean, they could oh, do- people have. If you look up social distancing together, you will see like almost every agent in their town. They've like taken my cover picture and put it, put like social distancing together with their town. And I'm sure they just go in and they take the meme, they do whatever I do, which is good. I want you all to do that for your area. Like just take it and bring community together because this is what it's all about. We're behind the screen. We have weeks and weeks together. And this is a, it's a really awesome way to lighten the mood and like get people, people come in my group and they're like this, it, I want you to know that it's just so uplifting and it's really made my day. So go and join the group. We're still accepting members forever and uh, <laughs> social distancing together. It's really fun. And, and oh, another way to get, to get people. Oh, I, had, I love it. I had a local um, vendor who was making these hats. And so I, she gave me one as a giveaway. So what I would do is I said to people, what we need is you have to add 20 people to the group, post my group on your personal page, and then you'll enter to win one of these. Love so it. Want one of these. That is such a great idea. I love that. Okay. So that's actually an answer to one of the, to this, one of the answers to this question, which was what sort of things are being posted once and needs where things are available, uplifting stories, et cetera. And giveaways would be a great one, but you've been doing pretty much all of those. I've been, I think one of the best things about that group that you have is I am getting like the funniest memes from out of there. I mean, they have been hilarious. My favorite one so far, I have to tell you guys, this has been the coronavirus got these flight tickets so low. I've got Bible study in Jerusalem tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there are some, the memes, like, you know, memes get old after like two, I know. two hours. So I, I have, I'm like a meme dealer. I'm telling you, like, like you want the good memes, you come to me because I know where the good stuff is. I, I'm like, how does she find these before everybody I else? know, I have the good oh, stuff. Good. <laughs> I yeah, do. It's good. It's, never, it's fun. It's not living. It's like, you know, this is for me, you know, there's so much fear going on that if I can, if, if I can help somebody get out of that, even yeah. for a minute, just come in the group, have a good time, laugh a little bit and just forget about everything that's going on. Like that's my passion. My passion is bringing people together and uplifting people. If, if I can do that, like take my energy. Like I want you all to have that. Yeah, I love that so much. I just think that's so amazing. I put that in my community group too. So I, I have memes for my community group like that are relevant because I have a mom's group. So I put like, you know, funny mom memes like, oh, you know, what was the one the other day? I really like my kid's new teacher. I, I have to get her something from Amazon. Like <laughs> click, add to cart, you know, like just funny, funny stuff that people can relate to. And again, just take them out of the situation. I think that the main thing is when you start a community group, don't come from contribution. Do not talk about real estate. For me, I didn't talk about real estate for until about six months ago in my groups, because what you can do is you can actually attach your business page to the group. So people know that it's powered by your group. You don't have to like put it in front of them. 
they're, they're going to see it. When they look at my personal page, I make sure that my personal page makes it very clear that I'm in real estate. So if you guys haven't worked on your personal page, super important to make sure that it says who you work with, um, who your broker is, that you sell real estate. Um, have stories about things that you've done in real estate. Don't just say, just sold, just listed. Make sure there's stories behind it. People want to get to know you as a person. So those are the sorts of things that I do to make it clear that I'm in real estate without, you know, having them having to put it into my group. Because I think that's really kind of a turn off and very salesy and people, they see they, that it's inauthentic. So if you, you, I would advise what works for me is just going truly being authentic about wanting to bring community together. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, let's see, I did want you to touch on, I had one last, did you have any other little notes you wanted to share before I go through my little list? No, go, go for it. Okay, so if someone is thinking, man, I really want to start a group, um, but I just don't really know what I'm passionate about, or how would I think about that? Like, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? So I would say, you know, think about your life on a daily basis. Do you, there has to be something that you're passionate about, right? Like, do you like people? It, I mean, actually, you know, mm. so, <laughs> <if> you, <laughs> but I like people behind a screen, right? Like I'm not, I'm not the best person to be in front of a screen yeah. and like at a party. I get like my, I get palpitations every time I get a happy hour Zoom. I'm like, <sighs> like I have no excuse, right? Like usually I can be like, sorry, I'm washing my hair. Now it's like, washing like you can wash your hair on zoom like yeah. <laughs> anyway so um but when i'm when i have this facebook group i can interact with people and i feel really comfortable because i'm behind the screen right like i can i can really be myself because you don't see the thousands of faces so um start a community group if that's something you want to do if you sell real estate and you don't if you don't have a passion start with your neighborhood right? Like start a group for your neighborhood, helping neighbors, like, you know, um, bridges helping, like our community is called bridges. So the bridges help neighbors, helping neighbors, you know, start there. If that's something, yeah. you know, we're passionate about real estate. Most of us are in real estate because we're passionate about it. So start with your neighborhood. As well. Yeah, that's such a great one. Okay. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, when you start a group, how many people do you invite? How many posts need to be there before you actually start inviting other people? So, uh, that's a good question. So when I start a group, I invite the core people, like my friends, right? Like I'll invite friends or colleagues. I don't invite other realtors because again, I consider my groups a private database, except the social distancing one. That's totally different. We're in a different time. But my, my, my other Facebook groups, my private Facebook groups, I don't invite other realtors because I truly consider it my private database where I'm adding value to potential clients. So I want to keep that right as my private bank. Yeah. I, I always tell people it's like a private lake that I'm fishing in as opposed to like the FISBOs and expires that are public. Like if you guys want to do that, you have that. I would rather stick a fork in my eye, but, um, I, this, the Facebook groups for me is what works. And so I invite, um, again, the influencers, I will invite people who are in my community, people I know have a lot of friends, people who, who like, like my stuff on Facebook, but those types of people. Yeah. Okay. Um, how many groups do you have right now? And do you have any pages or are they all just groups? I have a business page. I just never got into the page thing, but the page thing is also really valuable. I have people who, um, I know people who run pages who have great success with them too. I just prefer having the conversation and it's a lot harder to do on a page. Um, I run 40 groups maybe. Oh my goodness. I knew, I was wondering. I yeah, knew. It's a lot, but I have to tell you that I found leaders, right? to run this. So I have subgroups for my community group. So we have like book club, we have, um, you know, single mom group. We have so many different things, kids uh, with special needs. And so what I did was when people would ask me questions like, Hey, does anyone um, want to go hang out? I'm a single mom. I'd love to meet other moms. I would message that person directly and say, Hey, we don't have a subgroup for that. Would you be interested in leading? 
Because when somebody's asking a question like that, they're looking for a group like that. So if I can help them start the group and give them the kind of the foundation on how to run it, that's what they're looking for. So I have a bunch of groups that I don't actually run. I'm the our book club had its 21st um, book last Friday. They had the on Zoom. They had their they had the the book club on Zoom, which was so cool. Um, but yeah, so you can you can ha I have so many groups, but I don't even know what goes on in half of them. I just make sure that they're kind of all following our rules and guidelines. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Shoot. We're a couple minutes past. I just have uh, two okay. more questions. Sorry. Uh, one is, so if realtors request to join, do you just decline them? Yep. Okay. Easy answer. <laughs> uh, and then um, how do you, my, my philosophy is they can start their own, right? Like there's no, nothing stopping them from starting their own group, make it better than mine. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And then last question, where would someone go to learn how to connect their business page to their group page? Um, Google. Oh, easy enough. Okay. Easy. Nikki, you're awesome. I mean, I could ask you questions for days. So, uh, also, oh guys, Nikki was on Linda and I, and mine's podcast, um, everything life and real estate. Um, and so, uh, we did a great interview with her. She was so gracious to share. I could have asked her a ton of questions on that too. Um, and it just dropped, oh gosh, I don't have it right in front of me, but maybe last week or the week before. Um, and I'm trying to find it. March 17th. It's episode 63, uh, utilizing Facebook and social distancing um, with Nikki. So there you go, Blair. Oh, thanks, Blair. Put the link in there for you guys. Um, thank you so much, Nikki. We thank appreciate you. It. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Much.